So you've got your awesome newly jailbroken iDevice, but you have no idea what to do with it. There are literally thousands of tweaks and apps available in Cydia, but not all of them deserve to be installed on your device. I've scoured the Cydia store for the best of the best, and I've compiled a list of the best free tweaks and apps for iOS 7. Let's kick things off with Slide to Kill. I think we can all agree that one of iOS's biggest annoyances is not being able to kill all apps at once. It's amazing that functionality so simple is still missing in iOS 7. Thankfully, there's Slide to Kill. While there are other apps to kill all apps at once, Slide to Kill is the most intuitive. Where the iOS default is to swipe up to kill one app, Slide to Kill allows you to swipe down on any app to kill all running apps. Furthermore, Slide to Kill allows you to add apps to an exclusion list to prevent them from accidentally being killed. Just tap and hold on the app preview that you want to exclude from being killed, and a little lock will appear signifying that it will be excluded. By default, any app currently playing sound, like the music app, won't be killed, but you can change that in the settings. You can download Slide to Kill from the Big Boss repo. No Slow Animations does exactly as its name suggests and removes iOS 7's slow animations. Whether it's unlocking your phone, opening and closing folders, switching apps, or just going back to the home screen, No Slow Animations gives you control over the speed of iOS's animations. From the settings, there's a master switch to enable or disable the tweak, as well as a slider to customize the speed of the animations, where zero is absolutely no animation and one is the iOS default. It may not seem like the default animations are all that slow, but I promise you that if you give this tweak a chance, pretty soon you'll wonder how you ever did without it, and you'll be laughing at your non-jailbroken friends and their slow animations. You can download no slow animations from the Big Boss repo. The next tweak is called Blord. It's a simple tweak with a single purpose. When enabled, it forces your iDevice to always use the darker keyboard rather than automatically choose between light or dark. This is one of those tweaks that's incredibly simple, but I can't live without. When iOS 7 first came out, I remember hating how bright the color scheme was. This helps reduce some of the harsh brightness that your eyes have to endure, which I'm sure reduces some eye strain. Once you have it, you'll wonder how you ever did without it. You'll never go back. You can download Blord from the Big Boss repo. Your eyes will thank you. Speaking of your eyes thanking you, this next tweak is a must-have for reducing eye strain. It's called Flux. Actually, Flux is a must-have tweak for anyone who uses their phone in low-light conditions, or just before bed, or randomly in the middle of the night at 3 a.m. So pretty much everyone. Flux works by warming up the colors of your display. By default, iOS devices actually emit a bluish light, which is perfect in the daytime, but horrible at night. There's actually a lot of science behind it. The blue light that iOS devices emit actually mimic the sun, which is fine during the day, but can really mess with your circadian rhythms, which in turn make it harder to fall asleep and negatively affect your quality of sleep. Plus, the warm colors that Flux brings are much easier in your eyes, which does help reduce eye strain. If you let Flux use your location, it will automatically adjust the color of your screen when it gets dark by determining when the sunset is at your location. Once the sun's back up, Flux will automatically return the screen color to its default setting. You can also manually adjust the color of the screen at any time through the app itself. And that is the incredibly useful, eye-friendly Flux. You can download it from Cydia's default repo. While there are no shortage of tweaks that allow you to add and customize the toggles within Control Center, Flip Control Center is the best. It's the best because, one, it looks the most Apple-y, and two, it allows you to customize the icons found not only at the top, but at the bottom as well. Another really handy feature is that if you tap and hold on a toggle, it'll take you to its respective settings page. For example, holding the Bluetooth toggle opens the Bluetooth settings. There are also a bunch of add-ons within Cydia that add toggles for specific actions and apps. For example, I have one that toggles Flux on and off. If you go into the settings, you can customize things like which toggles to enable or disable, the order of the toggles, how many toggles per page, and which toggles are disabled on the lock screen. You can download Flip Control Center from the Big Boss repo. Activator is probably one of the most well-known and versatile CD tweaks out there. Activator gives you a lot of control over your device by allowing you to create custom actions for specific multi-touch gestures and button presses. For example, you can avoid using physical buttons by swiping from the right edge of the screen to go home, or swiping up from the bottom right-hand corner to activate the app switcher. A lot of other tweaks and apps can take advantage of Activator as well. On my iPhone, triple-clicking the home button brings up Blue Picker. When I want to lock my screen, I just swipe down from the top right corner. And if you're like me and listen to music from your phone while driving, Activator makes it really easy to skip tracks without even taking your eyes off the road. I've got mine set up so that holding the volume up button skips a track and holding the volume down button goes to the previous track. Activator is one of those tweaks that's really got something for everyone. I cannot recommend it enough. 
You can download Activator from the Big Boss repo, or beta versions of Activator from Ryan Petrich's repo. The link is in the description. Byte SMS is another classic, very well-known jailbreak tweak. It supercharges the default messaging app and brings some much-needed additional functionality. Byte SMS's strains are really in quickly composing and replying to messages from anywhere, not just within a dedicated messaging app. By default, pressing either volume button brings up the volume level icon, which when tapped allows you to compose a new message from wherever you are, even the lock screen. You can also add a custom activator action to do the same thing. You can also reply directly from the lock screen without the need to even unlock your device, making replies super quick. If privacy is a concern, you can disable quick composing and replying from the lock screen. When you receive a banner notification, just tap on it to reply from wherever you are. And that is Byte SMS. Because Byte SMS for iOS 7 is currently in beta, you will have to download it from their repo at http colon backslash backslash test dash The link is also in the description. Once it comes out of beta, you should be able to find it in the Big Boss repo. Swipe selection is a cool tweak that can maybe increase your productivity, but will definitely help you type faster or make corrections faster by allowing you to move the cursor by swiping your finger over the keyboard. It also works for highlighting text. Rather than dragging those little sliders all over, all you have to do is hold down the shift key and swipe your finger over the keyboard. Alternatively, you can also highlight text without holding down the shift key. Just begin swiping from the shift key without lifting your finger. You can download swipe selection from the Big Boss repo. Circular battery is a cosmetic tweak that allows you to change your battery icon because, well, why not? You're jailbroken, it's free, and you can. Choose from a horizontal progress bar, a circular battery, vertical bars, or signal strength dots. You can find circular battery in Cydia's default repo. Slow motion video recording is probably one of the coolest features of the iPhone 5S, but just because you don't have a 5S doesn't mean you can't record slow motion videos as well. If you have a compatible device, you too can record slow motion videos. Granted, there are some hardware limitations, so devices like the iPhone 5, iPhone 5C, iPod Touch 5th Gen, iPad Air, iPad Mini, and iPad Mini with Retina Display will only be able to record videos up to 60 frames per second. While definitely not as great as the 5S's 120 frames per second, it's still a nifty little tweak to enable halfway decent slow motion videos. You can download Slow Mo Mod from the Big Boss repo. For those of you that use iTunes Radio a lot, this is an absolute must-have tweak. As the name implies, iTunes Radio Unlimited allows you an unlimited number of skips and it also skips all ads. Most of the time it will prevent ads from even displaying, but if they do, you can just skip through them by pressing the skip track button. You can download iTunes Radio Unlimited from the Big Boss repo. This next tweak is awesome if you use Bluetooth a lot. If you have Bluetooth in your car or Bluetooth speakers or headphones that you're always connecting to, you know what a hassle it can be to remember to turn Bluetooth on, wait for it to connect automatically, but then it doesn't, so you have to go to the settings and then tap on the Bluetooth device to force it to connect. It seems to happen literally every time. Blue Picker avoids all of these annoyances by turning Bluetooth on and prompting you to connect to a device all from a little pop-up menu, all of which happens in one step and can be activated from anywhere with the customizable activator action, like triple clicking the home button. Once you're connected, you can disconnect just as easily by activating Blue Picker and deselecting the connected device. You can download Blue Picker from the Big Boss repo. Dock Shift is another purely cosmetic tweak that allows you to customize the look of your dock. You can make it completely transparent, make it more or less opaque, give it a darker tone, or skip the frosted glass look altogether and give it a blurry effect like the notification center. You can download Dock Shift from the Big Boss repo. Storage space is a very precious thing. As you use your iDevice, the amount of available storage space will gradually decrease as iOS creates and stores temporary files during normal use. You can reclaim a lot of that storage space by using iCleaner. iCleaner has the ability to go through your file system and delete space wasting caches, cookies, and other temporary files. From the main screen, you can choose what types of temporary files should be deleted and where you want iCleaner to look for them. If you're really running low on space, Tap the plus button in the bottom left corner, and from here you can delete unused dictionaries, languages, and wallpapers. Once you're ready to clean your device, go back to the main page and tap clean in the top right corner. Give it a minute to go through and do its thing. Once it's done, it'll report back to you how much stuff it was able to delete and then ask you to respring your device. I recommend using iCleaner at least once a month, but you really can't go wrong with using it weekly or even daily. You can download iCleaner from the Big Boss repo. Spot Define is a simple tweak that allows you to search iOS's built-in dictionary directly from Spotlight. Also, because it uses the built-in dictionary, you do not have to be connected to the internet to use it. 
It's a great tweak that adds functionality that you would expect to find in stock versions of iOS. You can download Spot to Find from the Big Boss repo. Have you ever tried tapping the date in Notification Center expecting it to open the calendar app, like how tapping on the weather opens the weather app? Yeah, it doesn't do that. Q tap today's calendar. This tweak adds the ability to open the calendar app by tapping on the date with the Notification Center. This seems to be yet another feature that should have been built into the stock versions of iOS. But until then, we have this great tweak. You can download Tap Today's Calendar from the Mod Maya I repo. Multi-Icon Mover is a simple tweak that helps you rearrange your home screen with ease. Rather than have to drag one app at a time across multiple pages, just tap the apps that you want to move, swipe on over to the destination page, press the home button, and voila, it's that easy. You can download Multi-Icon Mover from the Big Boss repo. Software Update Killer is a simple yet must-have tweak for every jailbroken device. It not only hides the annoying badge from the settings app which indicates that there's an update available, but also disables the download and install button to prevent you from accidentally updating. You can find Software Update Killer in the Big Boss repo. And last but certainly not least is Data Monitor. Data Monitor is an extremely useful all-in-one system monitor. It was primarily designed as a way of accurately keeping track of your cellular data usage. However, it also allows you to monitor your battery statistics, CPU and memory usage, and get detailed information about your device. For those of you without an unlimited data plan, this app is incredibly useful for tracking your cellular data usage. While there are apps on the App Store that do this as well, they have to always be running, whether in the foreground or background, in order to collect data, and even then I've always found that their numbers were off. Data Monitor does not have to be running in order to collect data, which makes it perfectly accurate, less resource intensive, and better for battery life. Setting up the data usage tracking is really easy. Just tap on the settings button at the bottom to bring up the settings, obviously. And from here you can set your billing cycle, you can set your monthly data limit, and you can also choose if you want to set a daily limit for yourself. You can also set monthly and daily limits for Wi-Fi usage as well. If we go back to the data usage tab, we can see at the top our monthly Wi-Fi and cellular usage, as well as last month's usages. Underneath the monthly little statistic snapshot is a little progress bar showing what percent of your data limit has been used and an estimate of how much data you will use based on your usage habits. Tapping on the monthly usage box brings up the daily usage history for the current month. If we go back, tapping on this box will bring up hourly and by the minute usage statistics for the current day. The data usage tracking ability of this app alone is more than enough reason to download the app. But in case you're not convinced, let's take a look at the device tab. From the device tab, we can view detailed statistics about the battery, memory usage, CPU usage, and system info. Tapping the battery usage section pulls up some useful information about your battery, including number of charge cycles, the temperature, and the health of the battery, amongst other things. Below that is some basic system info and an option to view some really detailed system info, like CPU clock speed, GPU info, amount of memory, cache sizes, and much more. If we keep scrolling, we get a bunch of network information and the ability to scan for nearby Wi-Fi networks. And that about covers Data Monitor. As you can see, there are a lot of good reasons to have it. It's the best way to monitor your data usage and get real-time device statistics and detailed system info. Make sure you download Data Monitor today from the Big Boss repo. And there you have it. Those were the best free city of tweaks and apps so far for iOS 7. As new tweaks and apps are always coming out, be sure to subscribe and keep a lookout for the next iteration of my best free tweaks video. Also, if you think I missed anything, let me know in the comments and maybe they'll show up in my next video. Thanks for watching and happy jailbreaking.